Okay, so the purpose of this video is going to be to look at what happens as the blood leaves the left ventricle and gets to capillary beds in the body. So uh, understanding the type of gas exchange that occurs when blood reaches tissues in the body and sort of like what, what goes where and you know how does it get there. So the focus will be on this capillary bed for the video. All right, so okay, what I've drawn is a little schematic showing sort of your body's cells. So here are cells. And these can be any cell, nervous cell, muscle cell, skin cell, it doesn't matter. Uh, every cell in your body needs access to blood, and every cell that is receive it receives blood from capillary beds. So this right here obviously is going to be a capillary. And this capillary has a red blood cell in it, so one singular red blood cell is in there. In between the cells and the capillary is something called interstitial fluid. Okay, so way back when you know students first learn biology, they go, oh, like there's a cell. A cell has the cytosol on the inside and the extracellular space on the outside. Well, instead of calling it an extracellular space, we're going to call it interstitial fluid. There's fluid that flows between cells and around cells all throughout your body. It's going to be mostly water, but it's also going to have all of the minerals and nutrients and gases and everything that you know cells kind of need need to function. In this case, the diffusion of gases is actually going to occur, occur between the capillary and the interstitial space. So things diffuse from here to here or here to here, and then the cells will take it from the interstitial fluid as needed. All right, before we can continue with this, unfortunately, we need to look at this equation right here. I know it gives people nightmares, I'm sorry, but cellular respiration. So what are these cells doing? They're trying to make energy. All right, and so you know, to make energy, right, they're going to burn glucose and they're going to burn through tons and tons and tons of oxygen. So they make energy, they lose oxygen. So for the time being, let's focus on that. So, okay, we're going to focus on the oxygen. So since they're losing oxygen, we can state that you know that these guys, that the oxygen levels here, are going to be really low. All right, the oxygen levels in the blood are going to be really high since they're coming from the lungs. The lungs replenishes the blood with tons and tons of oxygen, so the oxygen levels here are really high. And the oxygen in the tissues is going to flow from the blood to the cells in that direction. And that's going to happen two ways. So the first way is that there's actually oxygen just kind of floating around in the blood. This oxygen is going to leave the capillary bed and enter the cells directly. That's pathway number one. The second pathway is going to be through hemoglobin. So hemoglobin, which I'll abbreviate HB, will be bound to oxygen. One hemoglobin binds four oxygen. So in this capillary bed, as this red blood cell is kind of flowing through, migrating this way, right? this guy's going to undergo a reaction where it converts to hemoglobin by itself and then the oxygen molecules alone. These oxygen molecules will then come off of hemoglobin, diffuse through the blood cell, through the capillary, and into the cells that way. That's the second way. Remember that hemoglobin is the major source of oxygen. And when we talk about oxygen transport in general, it's usually going to be via hemoglobin. So major, this is minor. Yeah, there's oxygen dissolved in the blood, but it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's not significant enough, and there isn't nearly enough oxygen in the blood to, to provide sufficient oxygen to cells. All right, so we'll turn that off. Back to cellular respiration. So again, remember that right, the purpose of cellular respiration is to make energy. So if these cells are generating tons and tons of ATP, they're also going to be generating tons and tons of carbon dioxide as part of the process. So Again, if we look at, and I'll change the color up here, if we look at these tissues and uh, we analyze the carbon dioxide levels, you'd find that the carbon dioxide levels here are going to be really, really high since these cells are making energy. The carbon dioxide levels in the capillaries are going to be low. So there's a net diffusion of carbon dioxide into the capillaries. And again, this is only in tissues. Carbon dioxide is a little bit more complicated than oxygen transport, and it happens three ways. The first is that we'll take carbon dioxide from the cell and drop it off straight into the bloodstream. So there's one. The second way is that carbon dioxide is going to come out of that cell, diffuse through the interstitial fluid, and drop itself off 
in the red blood cell. Now, this carbon dioxide is going to combine inside the red blood cell with water, and it's going to form carbonic acid. H2CO3 is carbonic acid. This carbonic acid is then going to sort of spontaneously dissociate into bicarbonate and H plus ions. All right, inside this red blood cell is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin here and hemoglobin here. So here, hemoglobin molecules. Now, this is the second way. The third way is still in the red blood cell, is that this carbon dioxide can actually sort of migrate over to the hemoglobin and be scooped up directly by the hemoglobin molecule. So I guess this, uh, this would form sort of an HbCO2 compound. This would be the third way. Hemoglobin also has the unique ability, while we're here, to scoop up hydrogen ions. So you know that has nothing to do with carbon dioxide transport, but it's important, so keep that in mind. So to summarize, here, let's uh, create a new layer. Right, so the three ways that carbon dioxide diffuses from the tissues into the bloodstream is going to be here, straight into the blood. It's going to dissolve in there. It can combine with hemoglobin in red blood cells, and it can go as bicarbonate. Now it's converted into bicarbonate within the red blood cell. Uh, one thing I should note is that this reaction right here is facilitated by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase is only in red blood cells, which is why this reaction only occurs in red blood cells, <coughs> or at least at an insignificant amount. Remember, bicarbonate is by far, by far the major source for uh, carbon dioxide transport through the blood. Uh, hemoglobin, uh, carbon scooping up the carbon dioxide is going to be second, and then the carbon dioxide dissolved directly in the blood is going to be the, the really minor product. But the major, major one is going to be bicarbonate.